Okay, next we're going to go over Chapter 2, Concepts of Health, Illness, Stress, and Health Promotion. Um, in the theory section, we're going to compare traditional and current views of the meanings of health and illness, describe what the word health means to you, define what sickness means to you, discuss why nurses need to be aware of any cultural, educational, and social differences that might exist between themselves and their patients, and compare cultural racial differences in disease predisposition and communication between the main cultures and different races. In our clinical practice, we're going to observe patients during the data gathering process and interview process and determine their views on health and illness, recognize cultural differences in healthcare concepts and behaviors in the clinical setting, and be able to share those observations with fellow students. Okay, health and illness. It is important. It is important to define what you believe health and what illness to mean because your perception of these terms influences what you say and do when caring for patients. What may influence a person's idea of what the meaning of health is to him or her? Well, it's going to be your cultural, educational, and social influences. Who influenced the traditional view of health in Western culture? Plato, Aristotle, and other philosophers who were concerned only with biologic well-being. For many years, an acceptable definition of health was simply the absence of diseases. Peripheral, peripheral vascular disease resulting from diabetes is an example of a secondary illness. Some diseases are inherited or genetic or congenital, which are present at birth. Sickle cell anemia is an inherited disease. What is an idiopathic illness? An idiopathic illness is one for which there is no known etiology. What does etiology mean? Cause. C-A-U-S-E. It means cause. When experiencing illness, people act in ways called illness behaviors. Fear of what the problem may be and of undergoing examination and diagnostic procedures often cause anxiety. During convalescence from a chronic illness, total recovery is replaced by either adaptation, that is adjustment in structure or habits, or maladaptation, which is lack of adjustment. Current views of health and illness. In general, being healthy means being able to function well physically and mentally and to express the full range of one's potential within one's environment. Who is Rene Du Bois? And who is Halbert Dunn? They both influence current views of health and illness. They urged people to look at these concepts in a new way. They suggested that it is better to think of each person as being located somewhere on a continuum ranging from obvious disease through the absence of detectable disease to a state of optimum functioning in every aspect of life. Implementation, implement, implications of current views. A common theme in all nursing theory is that nursing is concerned with helping people cope with adverse uh, physiologic, psychosocial, and spiritual responses to illness, rather than with treating the illness itself. Since Florence Nightingale, nurses have encouraged a wholesome environment in the home, hospital, and community. Health and illness behaviors are based on what a person knows and believes about health and illness. 
What are some examples of health behavior? Uh, what about illness behavior? Some examples include of health behavior include watching dietary intake to avoid becoming overweight, exercising regularly, obtaining available immunizations against communicable diseases, and having regular physical examinations. Examples of illness behavior include consulting a physician or nurse, consulting the pharmacist, visiting a neighborhood health clinic, healthcare clinic, and taking prescribed medications. Great cultural diversity in the United States brings many differences between the values and practices of various ethnic and minority groups. Many cultural health beliefs are based on folk medicine passed down through the generations within a culture. Illness occurs in three stages. All of the following are stages of illness except we have one, the transition phase, two, the acceptance stage, three, the convalescent stage, or four, the terminal stage. The answer is number four, terminal stage. There are three stages of illness. We have the transition stage, which is the onset of the illness. We have the acceptance stage, which is the sick role when you're actually going through the sickness, and the convalescent stage, which is your recovery phase. Question number two, Jane has hypertension and has recently suffered a mild stroke. The diagnosis is an example of an A, or excuse me, of a number one, primary illness, number two, secondary illness, number three, idiopathic illness, or number four, terminal illness. The answer is number two, a secondary illness such as a stroke results from or is caused by the primary illness, which is hypertension. An idiopathic illness, once again, is one that it, there is no known cause. A terminal illness is an illness that is incurable and, and ultimately results in death. Second part of chapter two is holistic care, human needs, and homeostasis. In this section, we will list the components of holistic health care, identify four areas of human needs, and give an example within each level of need, identify ways in which the body adapts to maintain homeostasis, and then in our clinical practice, we're going to determine a patient's status on Maslow's hierarchy during the clinical experience. Describe alterations in homeostasis as observed in the clinical setting. The holistic approach. The current focus on holism is stimulated by Jan Smuts, a noted South African who formulated a, a philosophical theory of holism. In the holistic approach to healing, the person is the central focus, not the illness or the injury. What influences our basic beliefs about other humans and our relationships with them? The value we place on human life, our ability to deal with sickness and death, and our decisions about how to behave towards other people all have an impact. <clears throat> Maslow's hierarchy, theory of basic needs. <clears throat> Maslow's hierarchy takes into account the social needs and personal needs of the individual. In acute illness, which needs are most often compromised? It's going to be physiologic or our basic needs, our basic physical needs which include food, air, water, rest. In a chronic illness, which needs are affected? 
In chronic illness, all of a person's um, needs are affected. Here is a, uh, a, a figure of Maslow's theory of basic needs. I want you guys to save this for future reference. Um, basically, what this theory, theory states is we start at the bottom at the base of the triangle where the triangle is most wide, and that's where our physiological needs are placed. Air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction. If these physiological needs are not met, we cannot even go to the next level of safety needs. We cannot go to love and belonging. We can't go to esteem or self-actualization. So once all of our physiological needs are met, now we can start working on our safety needs. Once all of our safety needs are met, now we can work on our love and belonging needs so on and so forth. So if a person has physiological needs being met, safety needs being met, they cannot skip love, they can't skip love and belonging and esteem and go right to self-actualization. We cannot move to self-actualization until all these other levels are complete and met. So protection from physical harm from nursing standpoint is often equivalent in importance to physical need. How does self-esteem develop? Self-esteem develops from feelings of independence, competence, and self-respect, and from recognition, appreciation, and respect from others. Nursing actions that facilitate self-actualization are per pertinent mainly during rehab periods when the nurse assists the patient to strive to achieve full potential. In order to enjoy some degree of health and sense of well-being, one must adapt to factors in the external environment. Again, What is maladaptation? Mal, mal adaptation. I can't even say it right. Um, it maladaptation. It is the uh, adaptation that results in illness is considered maladaptation or lack of adapting. If we cannot adapt, that's maladaptation. Coordination of the central nervous system. The auto um, autonomic nervous system and the endocrine system is required for the body to adjust, adapt, and maintain equilibrium. What compromises the central nervous system? There can be a number of compromises. Um, in terms of uh, what can impact um, our nervous system. A lot of those things um, can be stress related. Um, what is our central nervous system made up of? It's gonna be the brain and the spinal cord, the brain and the spinal cord. Here's a picture of our central nervous system structures. In 1950, Hans Selay, a Canadian physician, published his research-based theories on stress. Selay concluded that stress plays a role in every disease process because of faculty, excuse me, faulty adaptation or maladaptation by the body. What did Selay believe would happen if the body overreacts in defending itself? What he says is if the body overreacts in defending itself, a surplus of hormones that are favorable to the development of inflammation and problems such as allergy, arthritis, and asthma may develop. So the more stress you have in your life, the more likely you are to see some effects on the body. 
Question number three, a teenage drug addict who has lost numerous jobs states, I do not have a problem with drugs. Everyone uses them as much as I do. I can quit any time. This is an example of what coping mechanism. One, denial. Two, repression. Three, rationalization. Or four, displacement. It is very important for you to know all of the different coping mechanisms. Number one is the answer, denial. Denial is more serious form of repression. The person lives as though an unwanted piece of information of, or reality does not exist. Section number three of chapter two, stress. We're going to explain why a particular stressor may be <clears throat> experienced differently by two people. List the common signs and symptoms of stress. Identify four ways in which a nurse can help decrease stress and anxiety for patients. And then in the clinical practice, we're going to document observations about stress reduction techniques used by staff or patients during, during clinical experience. All right, what may cause a very mild reaction in one person may cause a much stronger re reaction in someone else. We are all different. What are some common patient stress stressors? Please refer to box 2.3 in chapter 2 to go over common patient stressors. Coping mechanisms help us to resist and master stressors. Ways to achieve coping responses are seek information, take direct action, stop an unhelpful reaction, discuss the situation with someone from your social support system, using defense mechanisms to perceive the situation differently. Unconsciously using defense mechanisms gives us time to solve the problem and adapt in a positive manner. You can once again refer to table 2-3 for examples of commonly used defense mechanisms. Please review that table. How does exercise promote a feeling of well-being and tranquility? Why do you guys think that uh, exercise is a good stress relief? Does anybody know? Exercise actually causes endorphins to be released, which then reduces our stress level. All right, every nurse has the responsibility to patients to promote better health through teaching about illness prevention, periodic diagnostic testing for cancer and diabetes, and safe health practices. Healthy People 2020, I want you guys to Google this. Healthy People 2020, you need to look at Healthy People 2020. This is our uh, gold standard of health, health promotion and illness prevention. Um, our Healthy People 2020 is obviously um, published at, on a yearly basis, and it gives us those guidelines um, about promoting health and preventing illness. What are some examples of each type of prevention? There are three different types of prevention that we're, we're going to discuss right now, right here. We have primary, secondary, and terti tertiary. Please refer to the health promotion um, points box on page 28 in the textbook for examples. Question four, a nurse should minimize stress for a patient whenever possible. A common measure to reduce stress is one, explaining all procedures. Two, listening carefully and answering all questions. Three, providing privacy. Or four, four, all of the above. Definitely all of the above. Number four, explaining procedures, listening carefully to the patient, 
answering questions 